Out of all the things that happened in this chapter, for me, the most impactful <laughs> was actually Nami just BOOM! Impact dialing that mother. One Piece, Chapter 263, Pirate Nami and the Weird Knight versus Heavenly Warrior Subcommanders Hato- What do I- You know what? No, it's- it's Nami and Gonfall versus the two morons. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim here to bring you another review on the awesome and awe-inspiring Skypean tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw Gadatsu facing off against Chopper, and regardless of Gadatsu's strength and what he's considered, I considered him or thought to him to be the strongest uh, because he was Skyboss Gadatsu, thinking that he was maybe like the leader of the priests and therefore maybe the strongest or more, most formidable uh, of those four foes. Uh, however, Chopper was able to uh, to overcome him and uh, and and looked like you know he he I mean he obviously hit him and beat him uh, with his with his cloven whatever the hell it was called I forget the name of it now, um, but it looked like he jacked him up real well and that's how the chapter ended off. The chapter picks up right at at that spot over there and we see a few pages of really Chopper just kind of a self congratulatory type thing like oh my God yes I'm finally a pirate this is great I'm worthy I'm part of the team I'm doing some good for the team you know and it was really kind of a cool touching moment it's little things like that that I like um, you know because obviously self confidence is, is a big thing for anybody I don't care what type of fictional story we're in or if it's rooted in real world problems when you feel good about what you do and you feel that you're a contributing member of that group or that crew or that whatever um you, you just you, everything falls into place and you feel much better uh just all around uh, life seems to go a little bit smoother that particular day or hour or, or what have you so uh so it was really kind of nice and you go and you see gadatsu goes and he's face down stuck in the the one of the bog cl type clouds or whatever you know <laughs> and as he's getting and you know and chopper's going like yeah yeah you take that you know you don't get back up you know <laughs> and he's flailing his legs and everything his head stuck in there it looks hilarious i like a cartoon you know and then he goes and he's just like oh and he says something milky dial you know and he's going to use that one that the dial on his foot to try to jet him out he winds up pushing himself further down into the bog you know and and then he's like oh beaten by a raccoon i can't believe it <laughs> you know? but anyway like i said chopper's all just like yay i did a great job so then he's so now he's riding high on emotions right and he's like oh man he sees like the runes of shandor over there and he's like you know what i'm not even gonna bother meeting up with everybody i'm just gonna go and find the gold myself and surprise them right so chopper put on the big boy pants and now he's ready to go, <laughs> you know, but uh, so it was very, very cool. This chapter was one that was split into a few different parts. Uh, so the next part winds up taking us to uh, Kamakiri and one of the other uh, Shin Shindoran, uh, Shindorian warriors, it looks like. It looks like there's a couple of them. And uh, and they're going and, and they're obviously trying to work toward getting to Enel. Uh, that's kind of their ultimate goal, to, to defeat him, to overthrow his his power and his reign, of course, on, uh, on Upper Yard and, and Skypea. Uh, but really just Upper Yard, that's all they seem to care about. So then we go and we see something, and it's kind of cool because they're like, there it is, the, be the beanstalk. And I immediately thought of Jack and the beanstalk, which I'm sure it was modeled after. There's this beanstalk going up into the sky into the clouds and they're like at the top of that you know that's where we'll find Enel and I'm thinking oh this is kind of cool it kind of goes and throws back to some of these different uh you know these different uh, fairy tales I guess you would call them you know um you know that that certainly things that I read growing up and and have seen you know in various forms of tv and movie and stuff like that so it was kind of cool to see that well all of a sudden uh you know and then all of a sudden you get Enel he's sitting up on one of the branches you know just you know with his arms crossed or whatever just chilling right and he's just like oh yeah so so you're looking for me, huh? You know, and then Kevin Curious like blah blah blah, and then he's like, "You will address me as God," <laughs> and he's just like, "What do you want anyway?" You know. So then he goes and he says, "You know what? As a matter of fact, right?" He goes, "I'll sit here for five minutes. I won't move, and I won't try to counter your attacks. Go ahead. You want a piece of me? Go ahead and take it." You know. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, it, certainly it's very boastful of him, but obviously, and we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen, uh, the full, you know, the, the, the full majesty, I guess you would say, the full width and breadth of his powers. And uh, so I don't really know. I just, I have a feeling that it's something, you know, uh, electricity or lightning based. But anyway, uh, it hasn't really been revealed yet. I just know that there's obviously something about him that has kept him in power for these six years. Um, you know, so it, it certainly... 
he has a lot of confidence about him, I guess. Let's put it that way. So then it winds up going and it cuts over to, and the main bulk of the chapter is actually this Hattori and Kotori, uh, the, the two brothers, uh, well, they were all triplets, I guess, uh, of Satori, the other, the other, the reigning two triplets. And, uh, and of course they're going to go up against, uh, Nami and then, um, and then Gonfall. And, uh, and what they're doing is these two idiots, Nami's like, stop, they're unconscious. And these two idiots are like whipping around Sanji's half lifeless body and, and Usopp. And she's like, they're passed out. What the hell? You know? And they're like, no, we won't stop. Ho, ho, ho. You know, they're like, you got, you hurt our brother Satori. Ho, ho, ho. You know? And it's big Humpty Dumpty looking. And actually, no, I wouldn't even say that. Yama's the Humpty Dumpty looking guy. These guys are the ones that look like Tweedledee and Tweedledum from uh, from Alice in Wonderland. But anyway, they just look like a couple of buffoons, you know, and they're dancing around like retards. And um, anyway, so uh, so Gonfall and, and Nami are going to come in. Nami actually goes and she's like, and she goes and whips her uh, whips her climate baton or climate attack. And, uh, and, you know, she says, time for a typhoon. And she winds up, and it's like a boomerang, obviously. It goes flying through, and they both dodge it or whatever. And then one of them comes right up on her and is like, you know, and he goes and puts his hand up right to her face. And she's like, oh, no, an impact dial. And then she's like, fires it. And she's like, oh. And then she's like, oh, what the hell? That stinks, you know? And then they're like, ho, ho, ho. We put our farts in the scent dials. And I'm like, really? Are, are you Are you kidding me? What are you guys? A couple of freaking clowns? You know, what do you do? You take the water dial and do you piss in it and go and squirt it at people like a freaking clown? God, you know? Anyway, so they... Gonfall go. I think it's funny, the fart dials, because I actually thought about that uh, a few chapters ago and mentioned it. <laughs> and I had no knowledge of this, but... Anyway, so they they got four dials. They got a, you know they got an axe dial. They got an impact dial. They got a flame dial, and they've got these scent dials, right? That's what Gonfall says. And then then you know these two are these Hotori and Kotori are like, whoa, and they're throwing them back and forth. They're like, which one's which? Which one's which? You know? And they just remind you of a couple of bumbling idiots, man. You know what I mean? You just want to grab them and just, you know? But uh, so <laughs> so things wind up moving on a little bit over here. And, uh, and Nami's like, oh, man, she gets nailed by the fart dial. Uh, then one of them goes to hit Gonfall, and he's like, you know, goes to put it out. And Gonfall goes and like, whips his cape over, thinking it's the flame dial, and that the cape will help absorb some of the flame impact, you know? And he's like, ho, 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 you thought it was the flame dial. No, it's the scent one again, you know? And then the other one goes in, uh, or maybe he pulls out one of his other dials or his brother or whatever. It's hard to tell because they both look the same. But anyway, they wind up pulling out a flame dial, and then, you know, Nami's like, no, it's going to ignite the gas. So obviously their farts are flammable. And uh, so we've put that one to rest. And all of a sudden, you just kind of see the going, Mary, and you see poof, like an explosion, right? Well, then he's like, oh, ha, ha, we beat him. You know, we beat the Sky Knight, right? And Gonfall, you know, that you think is dead or what have you, for about a whole panel, you know. And then the next panel, you see Gonfall was just kind of like hanging off over the edge. He winds up coming and pulling himself up, and he's like, don't underestimate your enemy, you know. And, and I mean, he just runs one of them right through. I think it's Katori. And um, they're, to me, they're so meaningless of characters, I don't even really... You know, Hotori and Kotori, whatever. I thought Satori was a moron, and now he's got two. There's two other. You know, it's like really. <laughs> you know, there was there was three swimmers that got all the way up there. Holy shit! Anyways, um, so it's kind of neat though to to go and see Gonfall a little bit in action over here, and he winds up nailing one of them. Then right at that time, the climb attack comes back and goes <laughs> and nails the other for the typhoon. You know, goes and winds up nailing the other one, knocks him off the off the ship into the the Milky Road. It looks like over there. And then, uh, you know, Gonfall's like, wait, girly, quick, grab my gauntlet, you know? And, uh, you know, we need to, you know, deliver the finishing blow. So she's running around on the ship, and she's like, what's, what's a gauntlet? Where's the gauntlet? I don't know anything. Where's the gauntlet? I'm thinking, really? Come on, man. You know, it, oh, boy. You know, my faith is going to have to be put in maybe Robin or something like that uh, if this type of shit keeps up. Anyways, so then Pierre is just sitting there like, <laughs> he's got the gauntlet, like, here, idiot. And she's like, Jesus, this thing is so heavy, you know, and he's explaining, he's like, put it on, there's an impact dial in there. And she's like, God, what's this thing, what's this thing made? And he's like, it's made of iron from the blue sea, you know, it's a gauntlet, it's heavy, right? She's like, oh, God, I can't even, you know, she has no maneuverability with this thing on and has like zero, you know, ability to just be able to jump up on somebody with it because of its weight. So anyway, so, you know, one of the guys gets back up over there, and uh, Hattori or Katori or whatever, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to take you out for beating Satori and Katori, or which, whichever one it is. Now he knows that the two of them are down, and uh, and he's the last uh, the last one standing, right? And uh, and so he's going to go, and she's thinking, she's oh, it's actually, he jumps out of the Milky Road, that's why. Because then she goes, and she's like, well, you know what? Uh, you know, he's, he's wet, and it's uh, humid, and all this other stuff, and she's trying to figure out everything as far as barometer and air pressure and blah, blah, blah. So she goes and she fires a cool a cool ball at him from the, the you know the climate attack and uh, to kind of to cool things off and then she knows that the change in temperature and pressure when he goes to use the flame dial which he then does right 
uh, that it's going to go and create a ton of fog because of the moisture in the air, right? So, lo and behold, he does the flame dial fog. Is everyone's like, what the hell is going on? And then it's cool because Navi, man, it's one of her shiny moments. She comes out of the fog, right? And she just all of a sudden got her hand pressed up against his face. And she's just like, yeah, this is probably going to hurt. And he just hits him with that impact dial, you know? And right before he's like, no! <laughs> so I thought that was great, you know? And then they're like, okay. And now he's like, well, at least we protected the ship and blah, blah, blah. And they're going to move on their way. Uh, and you'd think that would be a good ending for the chapter, but it actually goes and takes us, if you remember from a couple of chapters ago, uh, that, that big uh, Humpty Dumpty Igaram fella, uh, Yama, uh, the heavenly commander of the, or the commander of the heavenly warriors, um, he had appeared and, and come upon Nico Robin when she was, you know, uh, trying to go deeper into the the, um, the ruins of Shandora. So, and uh, anyway, when you say Robin and deeper in the same sentence, uh, I'm sure a lot of people's minds wander. But anyway, um, so the, the neat thing about that is we just kind of see a quick double page thing, or not even just like the last page, and it's Yama kind of standing over her. And, uh, and he's like, oh, what do you think now on this and that? And you see Robin, and this is the first time we've ever seen Robin other than when Crocodile, of course, tried to screw her over, but that was that was a little bit of a different story but this is the first time since robin's been with the crew that we've actually seen her she's a little bit she's got a bloody lip and she just looks you know like she's been beaten up and down the place over there so uh, again words that that probably can be construed differently so all in all a very fun chapter that's how things leave off um i'm hoping that in the next chapter or two we'll see that kind of come and get wrapped up because uh you know i don't want nobody hurt my girl robin either so um i thought it was a fun chapter my chapter question though is what do you think about hattori and katori um, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm just, I, I wasn't a fan of Satori to begin with. And, you know, he got his ass whipped like 20 chapters ago. So to go and have these two rejects that it's like, you guys weren't even good enough to be one of the priests, but you guys were all triplets. It's like, okay, obviously, you know, I don't know. Just what are your thoughts on Hattori and Katori, you know, and just, I guess the triplets of the triplets of doom or whatever the hell you want to call them anyway. Leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up the like button if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next Van Nation. If you too like Nami, breasts, or are just a fan of breathing in general, go on over to my Facebook or Instagram page and take a look at more artwork like this.